Well, they work day and night to care for us, but the safety of our paramedics and hospital staff is at risk. That's right. There's been an alarming rise in violent attacks and healthcare workers are now calling for more hospital security guards to increase their protection. Let's bring in Sun Herald editor Cosmo Mariner and Nine Honey Shelley Horton for more on this. Cosmo, I'll go to you first. Welcome to the show. Uh, these incidents, they're becoming more and more regular. It's a disturbing uh, trend. Something has to be done here. Absolutely. And I mean, the union's talking about going on strike in a couple of weeks. And they're saying that the security guards should have um, sort of special constable powers, which means they can handcuff people who get out of control. I've got to say, I think they probably should. I mean, I think it's scary enough when you're a patient in emergency seeing someone else flip out, let alone if they're flipping out at you. And using the handcuffs would be not only for other people's safety, but pro potentially for their own safety oh, of that patient mm, as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And the other thing they're talking about is trialling um, body cameras, which mm. I think that's a really good idea because if you saw some of the footage of what these people have to experience just trying to help sick people, I think we'd all be fairly terrified on their behalf. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what do you think on this one, Shelley? Do, you, do we need to be doing more to protect them? So Bigger much penalties? More. I think absolutely. And also, I would be banning people. If you are going to be abusive to nurses, you cannot get health care. Like, I honestly think it has to get to that point where people have to have a massive deterrent. I had to take my husband to St Vincent's at 2am on a Thursday night for back pain, and there was a woman in there high on ice, very well dressed in her 30s and it took four, two ambulance officers, one police officer and a doctor to actually restrain her. Now, no one else was being treated. They were, all the attention was on this woman and she was high on ice. And I'm so not what are you to... suggesting though, what you leave her out in the street? No, I think she should be handcuffed until she can be treated when she's in a calmer state. But that's, when you're talking about people, especially who are highly addictive drug like ice and they're yeah. addicts, as you can say, that go through every sort of socioeconomic background. Yeah. To sort of say, well, we're going to withhold medical treatment, or withhold anything until you dry out. Yeah, sounds but impossible I mean, can't we use me. naltrexone or something where they actually are given a drug that takes the drugs out of their system, and you don't get treatment until the drugs are out of your system because it's not safe for other people to actually be helping you at that stage. And you know, once they're sober. I'm sure they're incredibly remorseful and can't believe their mm. actions, but when this woman has, like, superhuman strength and she was a five-foot-two mm. blonde, like, it just, to me, made me afraid as... And I was just there with a patient, made everyone else in the, in the room afraid and made the waiting time a lot longer because all of the attention was on that. So I'm all for the handcuffs, I'm all for m keeping them subdued, lock them down and do not treat them until they are in a better state. All right, let's move on and do something a little bit lighter because um, job interviews are stressful enough as it is, but now one boss is really up in the ante. So the head of an $8 billion company, Xerox, has... Um Zero has revealed he won't hire anyone who doesn't take their coffee cup back to the kitchen after their interview. Now, where do you stand on this, Cosimo? Because, I mean, if you're, you're going in for a job interview, yeah. do you even know where the kitchen is? Well, he says that he take, during the interview process, he takes them for a walk through, gets them something in the kitchen, then brings them back to the office, and then at the end of the job interview, he thinks that they should, you know, then offer to wander back to the kitchen with their coffee cup or their water or what have you. But I think you're in a job interview. You're so... It's an artificial situation. It's not like being in a friend's house where you're always going to be courteous and say, I'll take my co coffee cup back to the sink or what have you. You're nervous, you're trying to make the right impression. You're not thinking about the cup on... You know, I'd barely drink out of the cup on the table mm -hmm. in front of me. I'd be too busy trying to smile, make eye contact, things like that. I don't think it's a fair way to assess whether someone's a respectful, collegiate, potential staff member Yeah, at all. Shelley, aren't you looking for other things from a yeah. member of staff that's potentially going to work there as opposed to whether they wash their cup? Look, the thing is, I actually had a boss in London and he had the interview chair, which had a dodgy leg. And so what would happen is you'd come <laughs> in for the interview, you'd sit on it and the chair would collapse. What a and he would, he would, yeah, he would assess how you reacted in a humili humiliating situation. So did you laugh at yourself? Did you get embarrassed did and feel mortified? Did you threaten to sue? <laughs> did you get angry? To be fair, though, he wasn't a great boss, so I don't think... <laughs> what? He wasn't? Oh I don't goodness. think he was very effective. I think it's one of those things we all would like to work with people who are polite to taxi drivers and waiters, and I think that's kind of what we're looking for, people who are respectful in the workplace, who do wash up their own cups, that sort of thing. But in a job interview situation, 
I don't think you can pick that stuff. A bit too much. <laughs> well, hey, um, let's have a look at this one. Um, it's a bit of a holy guacamole kind of story. <laughs> because, huh? An Adelaide market is selling these monster avocados, but they don't come cheap. No, the Avozilla costs $23 a pop. That's five times the size of a regular avocado. It weighs a whopping 1.8 kilos. Shelly, yeah. if you're having a big like Taco Tuesday, <laughs> the best you invite man. your friends around, you get the big avocado, you smash up the, like oh a block mold, then you put it in that huge couple oh. of avocado skins. I'm thinking it's That is idea. amazing. It is. I'm loving it. Uh, here's the thing, though. You know that that avocado would be rock hard, rock hard, yeah. rock hard. Off. off. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, $23 down the drain. <laughs> It should have avocado should have like SMS alerts like yeah. we're going, here. Ready. going, going, going. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've done the maths on this and like you know, say an avocado costs four dollars and this is five times the size. You're still cheaper to buy five avocados. Yeah, than absolutely. But four you four don't get the drama. Yeah. <laughs> well, look at the, oh, that that is my Instagram picture. Of this avocado the size of my head. <laughs> I forgot about social media. Yeah. 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 You have a catch cry. Like, house deposit. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Or a house. Yeah. <laughs> could live in it. <laughs> oh, what do you think, Cosima? Would you spend um, that much? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, I struggle to go through one avocado without it going a bit festy in the fridge. So, you know, I'm not going to go out and buy this massive thing and then... I didn't even know there was those little, like, plastic things you could put the avocado... I know. Like, I've never bought one. Things. Does it this, one, this wouldn't yeah. fit. Magic. Another reason... That would have to eat it whole. Tupperware has to create a whole new <laughs> giant avocado thing. We are oh. solving all the world's big problems <laughs> this morning. <laughs> Thank, Thank you both for coming. Thank you. Thanks a lot. All right, coming up, breaking news out of America, 11 people have been...